one of the great problems in Australia is the fascination with contact tracing. Uh, but what exactly is contact tracing meant for? Uh, so in this short video, I will prove that uh, contact tracing is essentially prohibited by the World Health Organization. As you can see, its guidelines of 2019 are very clear about this not being recommended under any circumstances. It also shows that it can be potentially used in the very initial stages or in isolated situations, but really it's not a long-term strategy to, to deal with a pandemic. And so right now I'll extract a section from uh, Dr. J. Bhattacharjee's talk on contact tracing. And then we'll follow it up with an extract from um, Anders Tegnell. I hope that with that, any confusion in the minds of people in Australia that contact tracing is a great remedy for uh, COVID uh, will, be, will be reduced. Contract tracing is, works when a disease is relatively rare. The spread of the disease from person to person is, 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 like, is, is contained and easy, easy to document. And like venereal diseases is a good example. You know, it's, uh, there you can do contact tracing and it's very effective. Um, in a setting like this, like a respiratory illness, where basically vast numbers of people have the disease, uh, contact tracing can't work not as a way to, to eliminate or slow the spread of the disease. Now, if you caught the disease very early on, like, I don't know, maybe South Korea, um, where the, very few people actually do have the disease, or New Zealand, then yeah, you can do contact tracing. Then, then, then you can isolate the people. But now you're in a situation where you have to isolate the population forever from the outside in order to keep it at zero. And even New Zealand has failed at that, right? So it's, uh, and the costs are enormous, right? So you never leave the island. You never let anyone back on the island um, without without a fourteen day quarantine. So it's it's um, it's a policy that you could take in the early days of the epidemic, I suppose. Um, but now it's a policy you essentially have to keep forever, at least or at least until there's a you know a, a really really effective widespread vaccine. Um, it's not a policy that will ever eliminate the disease, and I don't think, given how widespread the disease is, yeah, that it can actually even slow the spread of it. And add on top of that the fact there's many people who don't have very many symptoms from the disease and it, it makes it even worse there's one other thing about contact tracing that's really important um, you are asking people to tell public health people who they've had contact with that's a very sensitive fact right uh you know in it, it it's uh in the in the incentives to 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 lie about that are enormous absolutely enormous and, and in fact many people will refuse to cooperate and in los angeles county for instance i think 60 percent of people who are contact or are in in touch with the with for the contact tracers refuse to cooperate at all it's a really difficult challenge and it, and the the theoretical idea that let's test trace we'll find everybody has it contact trace and then eliminate the disease that is not feasible i think it's a mistake to have that in the back of your head as a possible act uh, possible policy um, if you do testing, let, let's say you have a school, you open a school and you do a lot of testing in the school, you're going to find cases. You will. If, it, if the result of that is not to protect the lives of the people who have the disease, have the infection, because you're not, because they're not, they're like kids die at low rates from this disease relative to the flu or other things. Um, you're not protecting them. The, the, the test then is the only purpose then is to create a panic that leads to the scope closure of the school. You don't use tests. You, in, in medicine, we have a saying, we don't treat a number, we treat a patient. You use the test if it changes the clinical management of the patient. You don't use a test simply just to get the number. If I did a test on you, I would find uh, do, uh, like a set, an MRI study of you or a, uh, a, a detail. I could, if I ran every medical test on you, I will find something, something that the test will say is, is bad. Uh, you know, t tests have errors. Um, the question is not whether I can find something. It's the question is, is that clinically meaningful? Here, the only consequence is to shut down. Why should we do that? I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense, right? You, sh you shouldn't shut down um, on the basis of the test alone. Um, but I think there's that aspect of things. Uh, so I think, I think the testing should be used where it's useful. So in, in nursing home settings and other settings where you don't want to expose people, that's, there's clinically meaningful outcomes, not in settings where it's not. We are not quite sure about how well it's going to work because it is a tricky disease. It does not always show with very good signs 
uh, and that means that track this normal testing and tracing strategy, which works much better with these diseases like measles and, and very clear diseases like that, how well it will work for this kind of disease, uh, we don't really know yet. 